I asked you to open up a fresh spreadsheet for me, and this is what I would like you to make it look like. It's very, very similar to the previous one, right? There's going to be a year, there's going to be an interest calculation, but the subtle difference is we're going to have a repayment, not a payment. So when you hear the word repayment, what does that instantly tell you? Yeah, I, I'm paying off repeatedly something that I've borrowed, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so I've borrowed a huge amount, or someone has, you'll see it in a second, and we're trying to get rid of this debt, okay? So here are our three columns. If you like, just like before, you can take these two columns, which are clearly going to have amounts of money in them, and you can use the, um, you can use the dollar sign to format that so that it's a currency. I've already done that for mine. So once you've got your three columns set up, let's start to have a look at this question. Uh, up there in the top left, this person, Loam, Loam, Loamy, Loam, took out a loan with some bizarrely named credit union. It's $15,000 to be repaid in 15 equal annual installments. Uh, it gives you the amount, the size of each installment. It tells you it's on the 1st of April each year, and then they tell you an interest rate. What is the interest rate? 7% 7 per, per annum. How often does it compound? Because no other information is provided, you can assume it's per annum, right? If they wanted it to be per month, they'd have to tell you, yeah? Thumbs up. Now, you can see, just like before, there's this long series of questions here, right? We're not going to worry about them too much. We're just going to use the initial information in the question to set up our model. And just like before, we can then use our model to answer whatever questions they throw at us. Thumbs up? Now, in the previous one, and I'll show you it just here, they gave us a specific year. It's like, oh, it starts in 2021, right? Um, or 2005, or what it happens to be. Have a look at this question. Do they tell you when it starts? No. Not precisely. I mean, they tell you they tell you 1st of April, but they're like, what, what time period is this? I have no idea, right? So, yeah, we can use that up for ourselves. So rather than define it as like 2001 or this, right? I'm just going to say year one, year two, year three. Now, as has been suggested before, I'm actually going to start at year zero. It's going to be really helpful for us to do this. You'll see why, OK? Um, when it says repayment there, what I mean is the repayment that occurs, how does that impact the amount that is actually owing? Okay. Now, in year zero, no repayments have actually happened yet. So how much do I owe before any repayments have been made? It's in the question. Have a look. Zero. Oh, no. Think, think, think. I've just taken out a loan, right? It's 15000 That's how much I owe, right? Now, here's the thing, right? You know interest calculations, yeah? Interest calculations? In the previous question with superannuation, the interest calculation happened, I'm just going to go over to it, uh, it happened at the end of the year, right? We had to have our money in there for like 12 months before they would pay us a cent. Does that make sense? Right? But guess what? When you're borrowing money, the bank's like, hey, hold on a second. It's to my advantage, I'm the bank now, right? It's to my advantage if I charge you interest earlier, right? Like the sooner I charge you interest, the more money I make. So guess what they do? Before you've made any repayments, they already charge you interest. Okay, you're like, what? What jerks? I'll just pay earlier, right? Well, they'll just charge you earlier as well. So therefore you can see, year zero, no payment has happened, but they're gonna charge you interest because the bank always wins, okay? So how do we do this? We're going to take the amount that was owing, there it is right there, and we're going to add on the interest. So I'm going to multiply by, well, what am I going to multiply by? 1.07. So what this does is it captures the amount that's already there, that's the 1, and then it adds on the interest calculation, that's the 0 0.07. Are you with me? Okay, so we hit enter. You're like, this is not looking good. I haven't done anything. This thing's already going up, okay? But thankfully, I'm going to go to year one. I'm going to take the previous year and add one. And now my repayments are going to begin. Did you have a question? No, sir. You're okay? What is the repayment again? It's in the question, right? Have a look. What, what is the repayment? It's this awkward number here, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, so I'm going to take whatever I owed before, 
That's that figure there. And because I'm making a repayment, I'm reducing how much is owed, right? So remember last time I was adding on, my superannuation is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't want this to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I want it to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's why I've got a minus sign I'm subtracting. Are you with me? Okay. What's the thing I'm subtracting again? What quantity? Look, look at the quantity. It's 1646 and 92 cents. That's my repayment. Does that make sense? Okay, so I hit enter. So this is how much I owe after having made my first repayment. But what does the bank do? Because they're, they're not in this for charity. They're in this to make a profit. They're going to charge us interest, right? Now, thankfully, we already know how to charge interest. It's in this, uh, this cell right here. Yeah? So I don't need to retype this. I'm just going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it down. Are you following so far? Let's go ahead and copy, and then paste. How's it looking? Does that make sense? It's looking OK so far. All right. Now, I just do want to point out, right? It's looking OK mathematically, but financially, I'm like a little bit depressed, right? Because I started out owing $15,000. I've made a repayment. But I owe more than I started at the beginning, right? So like, this is not going well for me. That's why my repayment has to be fairly substantial. Okay. Now, what's great is see all of these um, these cells, right? I've set them up already. We've done all the hard work that I can just do this recursive thing, do it over and over again, and I should get the next year. I'm going to copy all three cells, and I'm going to pay it down to the next row. You with me? Yeah, and yes, Mo, you've already got down to row 15. That's great. So you can just double check. This is the repayment. I minus $1,646.92. Repayment's done. And then I go over to the other one. And there's the interest calculation. It goes up by 7%. Okay? And for the first time, I actually owe less than what I started with. But at least I'm making progress. You see this? Okay. Now what's great is the question itself tells us how long this is supposed to go for. How many years do I do this? 15 years, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and if you didn't know this before, when you highlight these cells that you want to um, copy and paste down, if you are very careful with your cursor, you might notice in the bottom right hand corner there's a little, uh, little sort of blob there that you can put onto. If you look really closely, your cursor will change color and you can drag this down. If you look closely, you'll see I'm holding down my cursor um, and it'll go down as far as you want it to. I want it to go down at 15, right? So I'll just keep going a little further. OK. Now, I've gotten down to year 15. Um, raise your hand if, like me, you use the, the currency formatting on your cells. Did you use currency formatting? Yep. OK, fantastic. Thank you, hands down. What you'll notice is, if you've done that, yours should look exactly like mine. You can see there's these figures in brackets, right? What that's doing is it's saying, oh, that's negative. Right? You've actually gone past, you don't owe anything anymore, or you're actually in credit at this point. Okay. So it checks out, after 15 years, we have paid off the entire loan. Does that make sense? Okay. Now you can go back to the question, and you can see, say it again. Um, well, fast or slow kind of depends on how long you want it to go for, right? I'll give you an example. My hex debt, right? Um, that's how much I have to pay the government back for my university fees, right? It's in my interest to pay that off as slow as possible because it's a very low interest loan, right? The government's hardly charging me anything for that. So even though it's like, oh, it sounds bad to be in debt, I actually make more money holding on to that money and putting it in the bank than I make by paying it off and getting rid of the debt. Um, I've already paid off mine completely because um, the government forces you at a certain point. <laughs> but you know, I want to pay it off as slow as possible. So slow and fast. Just depends on what you want. So if you do too fast, you, your, your small interest rate will happen on a large amount of money, therefore you're paying more. Right, so I'll, give you, I'll just give you a very, very uh, ex exaggerated example of it, OK? Just imagine you had $100. Right? You're like, what should I do with this $100? I could use this $100 to pay off my debt that I've got. Or I could put my $100 in the bank, and I can earn interest, right? Now, which one you choose depends entirely on how bad the debt is and how good the interest is, right? Think about this. If I'm getting charged on this debt at a really high amount, right? 
then it's in my interest to get rid of that debt fast. Does that make sense? Classic example, credit card debt. Um, credit card debt's usually charged at like 20 to 25%. What? 20 to 25%, right? So don't use your credit card for credit, okay? If I've got $100 credit card debt, pay that off straight away, right? Your bank account will never pay you 20 or 25% interest. It might pay you like three or four, right? So what you gain here isn't as good as what you can get rid of here. Does that make sense? Okay. However, hex debt's actually very, very low. I can't remember because I paid it off a while ago, but its debt is not 20 or 25%. It's like one or two. It's very small, right? So the advantage I get by paying that off is also quite small. It's better for me to actually invest that in something else, even putting it in the bank, right? If my bank account will give me 4% interest and my hex debt's at 2%, it's better to keep that debt because this bank account's actually earning me more interest than I'm losing from my hex debt. Okay? So you've got to look carefully at what the numbers are. Make sense? And does the 